Facebook, so I'm going to click the record button. Welcome to Monday's live Q&A call. My name is Shannon Crow. I'm a yoga teacher, a mother of three, and I work for yoga teachers as a consultant and trainer. I'm super, super niche down in my own community. I teach one day a week yoga for pelvic health. Uh, working on that niche work, I really learned a lot and doing the podcast, talking to yoga teachers, working as a consultant over the years, uh, I've learned a lot. But the biggest learning I've done is I think the hard way. So that's why I'm excited to offer live Q&A for all of you. I see that Glenna, Kim, Tamara or Tamara, tell me how I should be saying it, and Tatiana are all here. Tell me if I'm saying that name as well. I think it's Tatiana, are all here live in Zoom. If you are over on Facebook and it says that we're live, you can use the link to come on over and join us at Zoom and uh, to ask your questions. So for all of you that are here live, you are more than welcome to put a link to your Facebook page or your website in the chat as we go. You're also welcome to chat to each other. It's so fun to make connections with other yoga teachers around the world. And often we see like, hey, I'm teaching that as well, or I just read this book or something that's going on in the chat. You're welcome to do that also. If you put a question in the chat, it's a little harder for me to find. So you can also put it with the Q&A button. If you feel like you want to explain your question more to me, then we have the ability to also speak to each other. So you can let me know if you want to do that for your question. Okay, let me look at the comments here. All of you are saying hello. And Glenna was telling us that she has her very first uh, class that will be her very first class since becoming a yoga teacher that she will be taking over. That's so exciting. Uh, Kim said hello. Kim's from my area. And Tatiana, oh good, I'm glad I'm saying that right. Glenna, you have a question. All of you that are tuning in here live, if you can put your question in then now into the Q&A or over in the chat somewhere there, if you put it in the Q&A, which what is so cool is you can also ask an anonymous question if you did not want your name associated with it. Okay, Tamara like camera, camera, Tamara. Am I getting that right now? Like camera, Tamara, Tamara, exactly like camera. Let me know if I'm saying camera the way you do. Tamara. That's so cool that you can say like camera. Okay, good. Tamara. You're, you might have to just deal with me for a moment as my brain processes that uh, name. Okay, so tell me, everyone, what your questions are. Post them in the Q&A or in the uh, chat, and then I'm going to get to Glenna's questions here. What are your, or her question, what are your thoughts about cueing only versus cueing and doing poses at the same time when you teach? Okay, Glenna, this is such a good question. And I love that you're asking this as a new yoga teacher. So my thoughts on this have changed through the years. So it used to be that my brain would only work as a yoga teacher where I would move and cue at the same time because I was so new to teaching. So this is when I first graduated. So what I did is I used a little recorder. <laughs> now you can just use an iPhone, but when I became a yoga teacher, that didn't even exist. But you can use a smartphone or you could use your computer, you could use something else, but I had to go and buy like one of those little, like I'm a journalist kind of recorder. So I would record myself doing the class and speaking the cues. Then I would play that back to myself and do the class as the student so that I could feel what it feels like and I could hear my cues and see if I was doing anything that was repetitive or annoying <laughs> or if there was a cue that just didn't land right. Now, that's how I built up my practice of Queuing. That's how I started. The next thing that I did, did to build this up, and we have a whole podcast episode on that. I'm going to try and remember to send that to you. So the queuing episode, we had a yoga teacher that had asked me, this is a long time ago, uh, but I'll put a note to send that out with the replay. 
or put a link to it here in the comments as well. The next thing that I did was I started to cue a sequence that I knew so well through the cues. And the easiest for me for that was to cue when people were lying down. So at the very beginning of class, say if there was sort of like a little Shavasana to start where they just landed and grounded, that helped me because people weren't all looking at me. I was really nervous as a new teacher. And so then I would cue while they're lying on their back. And that way I could sort of like see them, they're the visual for me and cue from sitting at my mat. The other thing I like to do is practice walking around and cueing, but that comes with time if you feel like you're confident enough to leave your notes or maybe you have a little flow. I also believe as a yoga teacher, it's okay to have notes. Some yoga teachers build up enough where they feel like I don't need to have notes and I definitely could teach without notes, but there is something there for me now as a teacher that I really love to have some notes there Maybe it just reminds me or kind of keeps me on track of something. And lots of times I don't even use those notes. My students are used to me with notes. I don't think they think I'm any less of a teacher. One person told me that they like to see that I come prepared and come with notes. So I don't know if that's helpful. And then I would practice doing that. See what it's like. See if you can challenge yourself to maybe teach from... Uh, from sitting. So it's like working a muscle and you will slowly get better with it over time. And there's no way to do it perfectly at the very first. You need to be okay with doing it kind of like, okay, let's do this crappy for a while. Just like I did with the podcast, just like I did when I started teaching yoga. Let's all like say, all right, I don't know what I'm doing. Let's do this crappy for a while. <laughs> It doesn't matter what you do. Uh, I was telling my daughter this the other day. She was saying, I want to do this thing, this DIY thing, but I want to be really good at it right away. And I said to her, you just have to do it crappy for a while. Just like when we were learning how to walk, we did not know how to do it at first. <laughs> so uh, I hope that helps with the queuing. Let me know, Glenna, if there are any other questions. Uh, if anyone else here, Helena's here, uh, Kim, Tamara, I hope I got that right, and Tatiana, let Glenna know what has helped you with your cues as well. It's so great to hear from each other in the chat. So Glenna says, right now I'm most comfortable cueing and doing at the same time. That is not what I was taught in my yoga teacher training. So what was not taught? I've cued without doing, but that's much harder for me. Okay, and that's okay. And sometimes I go to say something and my brain just works in that way. The other thing I want to say to you is that here's where my view has changed on this. I used to think it will be best if I can just sit somewhere or stand somewhere and walk around and cue the entire time. And then I will be like the best I can be as a yoga teacher. Well, I found that actually everyone learns differently. Some people are not good at processing audio, so they need a visual. So sometimes I'll do the demo and that's easy for me to cue and do it at the same time. I'll do the demo of something and I'll walk people through it. I may tell them, you know, I'm doing this faster and then I'll cue you through it. So some people really need that visual as well. I would say, don't beat yourself up over this. Just learn as you go, Glenna, and give yourself the grace, like goodness. You know what it's like to go to a yoga class and then begin your yoga teacher training and think, oh my gosh, how did that yoga teacher do that? So I would say practice it and practice it at home. You know, cue yourself through something until you know it so well. And that's the other thing. When you have that yoga practice and you've done that sequence, and you've done it over and over again, you could cue it in your sleep. Do not feel like you have to reinvent the wheel for every single class. Your students will appreciate some, uh, what's that called? Repetition. So if you took the same sequence and you decided, I'm going to do this for six weeks, guaranteed most students won't even know that you're doing the same sequence, guaranteed that you'll find little ways to tweak it, and that will help to build that confidence as well. Let's see what other people say about cues and what has helped them. We all teach differently too. 
So don't be afraid to really dig into what's yours. Tatiana says, it really depends on who I'm teaching. Yes, demo, walk, demo. I know the demo is something that I let go of thinking that I would be a more superior teacher if I wasn't doing a demo, but that's not true. I was just selfishly thinking of me, not the students who need that demo. Okay. Helena, so great to see you here. Helena is, uh, I'm so excited that you're here. And I actually wonder if we can get Helena in to answer some questions today, all about pelvic health and pain for pelvic health, because she's an expert in this topic. And a lot of you might have heard her on the podcast and it'd be great to get her to answer some really specific questions as well. Helena, let me know if you're all set up to do that. If you're all set up, if you want to go live with video or just voice, you can let me know how that goes. Um, okay, so she says, I cue and do at the same time. If there is something new I'm teaching, then for sure I want to show what I intend. I also agree with Shannon, people do learn in all different ways. And Kim says, my views have evolved as well. I do also teach with some notes just to keep myself on track. Good, I love it. Helena says, however, I have a pet peeve when I'm taking a class, I prefer, prefer to have as little talking as possible. This is another key thing. I think that we think that we need to spill, fill the space. Uh, as yoga teachers. Okay. I let, she said, goes on to say, I like to give my students time to experience doing nothing and having space to breathe and explore what is going on in their minds. I find it distracting when there's too much talking. Me too. Uh, Tatiana says, yeah, grabbing some paper for notes. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, also, there's a replay of this as well. And Tamara says, no, Tamara, just like camera. <laughs> I'm trying. I teach a lot of seniors summer HOH. They need the visual. I don't know what HOH stands for. Do you want to tell me what that stands for, Tamara? Okay. And let's see. Glenna says, what are your thoughts about queuing? Oh, yeah. So you had put that. Thank you. So we answered that one. Uh, Helena, let me know if. Ready to answer questions. Yay, I'm so good. I'm so glad. I'm having a back lizard pain today. Okay, that's fine if you stumble on your words. Listen to me stumbling on my words. The only other thing I'm going to add here is I will get a set of earbuds. And Helena, I'm going to give you a second just to settle in and get comfortable, maybe get a glass of water. I'm going to answer a question from Tatiana and then we'll get into any questions that you have about pelvic pain. And what I love is that Helena's here to answer. She's really into answering questions specific to pelvic pain. And if we can help, we can both help you uh, because I like to focus in on yoga for pelvic health, as many of you know. Yes, go have your little pee break and a water, Helena, and I will answer Tatiana's questions and any other questions that come in, just general yoga business or yoga teaching, anything I can help with as well. So Tatiana says, I know we got a webinar a few days. I know we got a webinar a few days. We spoke about taxes. So a webinar. Oh, on the podcast, maybe. Was it the podcast, Tatiana, that talked about taxes? My questions are more about taxes. Just what is mo what most yoga teachers can deduct. Okay, so I'm so glad you asked this. Can anyone else see that my video is like going really dark? <laughs> I don't know why that is. Let me see. Hi, Zoom. I'm still here. What's wrong? Zoom is not happy with me at this moment. That is so odd that my computer is. Does anyone else notice that it's really dark or is it just me that sees that? Okay, you see me normal. Okay. I mean, it is snowing here. <laughs> it didn't get that dark. My computer screen just went really dark. So we'll see what's going on with that. Okay, I'm glad to know that it looks fine for you. That's all that matters. Uh, so Tatiana, you have questions about taxes and you want to know what most yoga teachers can deduct, tips, mileage, etc. 
what I might not be taking into consideration. Okay, so the great thing is, is that we have a podcast episode that goes right into this and what you can detect. We had done a mini series and one of those was on taxes and it was with, it's gone from my mind for a moment, but I can see her face, our guest face. Oh, she's an accountant, but I will put the taxes episode uh, as one of the links to put here. I'll put it on our Facebook page in the comments and then I will also send it out in the email that goes out with the replay. If anyone else knows which one that is, you can let me know. Uh, so this is the links to send to all of you. So let's start to list here in the comments here for a moment. What are some of the things that you know and you've checked with your accountant or you just know that you can claim as a yoga teacher? So I definitely claim a part of my home office, my office equipment, my, you know, my subscriptions to things like Zoom and my email provider. Uh, I claim some of my fuel. I can claim some of my fuel. I leave my accountant with that thing. And same with my, say, my heating and my utilities, like my phone bill. It's only a certain percentage based on the size of my office space. What else can I write off? I can't, from my understanding, I cannot write off uh, yoga clothing, but definitely yoga props, books music, um, anyone else? Oh yeah, vehicle expenses in a, is another one. Insurance, your trainings, travel, sometimes meals, especially if, like say if I go for a meal and I'm talking with a yoga teacher, I just flip that receipt over and write on the back of the receipt, you know, what we were talking about and how it relates to yoga, my yoga business. I'm traveling to the Toronto yoga show. So I'll be writing off my travel there. I obviously cannot write off, uh, like if someone goes with me, <laughs> like say my children, I can't write their travel off. Like I'm traveling to Bermuda to go teach mama nurture and, uh, Sean is going and my youngest is going with me and we, I can't write theirs off, but I can definitely write off my plane ticket, uh, any accommodations and my meals while I'm there as well. And if you're ever in doubt, like make sure that you have a great accountant who can answer those questions for you. Let me know if that helps Tatiana. And then also I'll just look for that uh, episode as well. And what will be great is Helena is going to jump on here on video. And, um, I hope that helped. Okay, so that's our, Helena, this is going to ask you a few questions. I think I can promote you to panelists, but you have to agree to do that. And it might just take a little moment here. Yay, so great to see you. How are you? Can you hear me okay? Uh, there's a little thing in Zoom. Can you hear me now? Ah, uh, yes, yes, sometimes it just takes a moment. How are you doing? I'm just going to, I'm going to let myself sit back and just have double chin face. <laughs> it's fine. You don't have to That's double where chin. I need to be today. Yeah. Sit back and relax. So tell I'll just show you guys my mandala. <laughs> oh, no, we'd love to see you. Mind. Yeah. Uh, nice you too. Tell everyone who's here, tell them if they didn't hear you on the podcast, tell them what is the work that you do and who do you do it for? Um, I work uh, with people who have pelvic pain, uh, mostly people who have interstitial cystitis, which is a condition of the bladder. And then I also work with people who have persistent pain. So uh, whatever form that, that might take in. And I have a pain care workshop that I offer. And I also have like a group class that we do together. And I also teach one-on-one -on -one privates for just regular old yoga. Right. Yeah. So things have really taken off. I feel like when we first started talking together, then you were just getting into this and being like, okay, this is my niche. This is my specialty. And so, it's so exciting. yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I definitely like, I have a website now and I have clients and things are happening. It is slow 
though as well because I I still work in my MRI job and um, you know it's the constraint between paying bills and trying to really do something different is difficult um, at this time for me so I have to kind of stick with my MR gig right now and it takes up a lot of my time and energy yeah so I'm teaching a couple on Monday nights privately and then I'm doing a group pain class on Tuesday nights and that's about it and I am doing here and there an online pelvic pain client but not as much as I'd like right yeah it's just a time issue I, well I, yeah you basically have this other job and then you're doing it part-time well yeah I, and then my husband and I we also have a another business it's an arborist company so then I'm doing you know bookkeeping for for that and um wow. so yeah like I don't like yeah I'm like full up so I'm just coasting with my yoga business right now and that's totally fine and good with me I have a workshop coming up in two weeks and no one's signed up and I'm not that upset about it. I'm okay with that, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I've had those moments where I'm just like, okay, if this doesn't run, I'll actually have that time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up because sometimes I think that in the yoga world, we're thinking that we have to put on this face of like, I'm selling out all the time. Everything is full. And that's just not the way. You know what? I was actually really surprised because the first one I did, so the workshop is, you know, we, it's called your brain on persistent pain and how yoga can help. So mm -hmm. we basically go over, you know, the changes that happen in the body when you have a persistent pain issue. And we also go over how, you know, different facets of yoga can help you to break the cycle. So, you know, we talk, go into, you know, breathing, um, meditation, asana, and then also a huge part of it is philosophy because how we think about our pain really affects um, how we can break the cycle. And, um, I, it's a really, really great workshop. And the first one sold out really great. I was thrilled. And then this one, not one person has signed up. And I, I think it's just a matter of bad timing because it's March 16th. Is oh, the yeah. Day. March yeah. break. I didn't even think about it. So yeah. I'll, I'll probably just, you know, not say anything to the world that it's canceled and just let it, people think it ran, so to speak. Yes. <laughs> And then yes. try again in a few months. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Well, even I just feel like any yoga students that I know now, they're fine with, oh, this didn't run and this will be the next day that it, this, this will be the next time. So sign yeah. up now. I, yeah. It just happens. You're right. It's the timing. If anybody here showing up live, Sarah, you're new in here. Stephanie's here as well. If you have questions, anybody who's tuning in here live uh, about, persistent pain, um, anything pelvic health, interstitial cystitis, and also I will make sure to link to your podcast episode as well. Uh, it's episode 77. Okay, look at you know it off by heart. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> so you can go to the connectedyogateacher.com slash 77. It's super easy when we have that. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, um, I don't really know if you remember, but on the, the group, uh, some people were asking about how to get more clients. And I had mentioned that I did uh, a Google, Google ad. A yes. Work, Google oh, ad yes. Work. Oh, yeah. We were going to talk about that. We were curious about how I did that. And it, I have the page open. If I don't can know if, I'm, if I'm allowed share? to do a sh screen share. Let me just make you, maybe you can ask me, this will be amazing to do. So what was the question? It was like how to do a Google AdWord. And yeah, like, and it's so easy. Make co-host. I have to do that with you. Oh, uh, you probably. There you go. Now There's I think you can share options. your screen. Here's the share um, screen. Okay. So can you guys see my Google? Can you guys yes. see that? Yes. Okay. So all for the first thing you need to make sure you have done is make yourself a business on Google, right? So you can't do this if you, if you, you haven't registered with Google as a business. And does so, it cost anything to register as a business? Totally free. Okay. And it's so easy. All you're doing is just entering who am I, where do I, where am I and that kind of thing. Um, so maybe I could just quickly show you guys what that looks like. Yeah, Google My Business here. So this would be what we go to. Yeah, Google My Business here. 
and you just follow the prompts. It's okay. so easy. Yeah. And then the other thing that you might want to consider now, I know that a lot of people don't have like an actual address for their yoga business, but you want to put something in that's for your area because then it'll help you to populate in the searches, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I don't actually run my business out of my home, but I have my home as my business address. Um, uh, just so that I'm coming up in the right area. Okay. Searching for yoga. That's it's, such a good point. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to go back here. Actually, uh, here's the link here. So Google ads is what you want to look for. Okay. And then you can just start off with this here. Okay, so I don't think it recognizes me. So I'm just gonna start, say start now. Oh yeah, it's going. Thank you and, so much for doing this because I, I've never looked at this. Yeah, <laughs> and actually it was very effective. Okay, so actually here is the home page, mm -hmm. And so you can see here that I have actually a couple already set up. And so what's going to happen is you're going to go to this create new campaign. Okay. And so then they ask you, what do you, what do you want to, to happen? Do you want to get more phone calls, um, more visits to your physical location or get more website sales or signups? So what I really want is I want people to call me on the phone, on the phone, or I want them to visit my website because I don't have a physical location. Right. Right. So for now I'm going to say, websites um, and I'm going to pick this up and so what I'm thinking yes yeah, so it's it's sensing that I have a business because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm logged on to my Google account and if you didn't this wasn't on here then you would just click on to your new business and link them together okay so I'm just gonna click on here that's me So this is where I live. I live in, in Courtney. Oh, we're going to all go visit you now. It's probably yeah, very nice yeah. there. You're not allowed to come to the island. The, the ferries are very expensive and long. Don't come. <laughs> <laughs> there are too many people on the island. You're not allowed to come. See, uh, so my potential uh, audience here is 90,000 people a month. Okay. So uh, I don't really want to target Powell River because that's a ferry right away. So I'm going right. to take that out and then maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll out a little bit and I'm going to come up like this. This is kind of more of my geographical area and I might see. So the other thing I can do is target Campbell River. They are just up the road about 50 K. So I'm going to add that in as well. Okay. So you, you want to just select a good geographic area that you're interested in um, targeting, or you can say, oh, within 50 kilometers. Oh, that's brilliant. This All right. You can do it. Okay. I, I find this clunky for my area because we're an island and we're right. like, you know, it doesn't really you're out in the water there. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not helpful for me. So okay. this is how I'm going to do it. So now you can see that my potential audience size has jumped to 122,000 mm -hmm. because I included Campbell River as well. So I'm going to go to next here. And then what, you know, English. Most people are speaking English in where we live. So I'm going to go with that. And... I'm just going to go down and I'm going to just click yoga. Did you put those in there in the business no, categories? Yes. Really? It's very smart. Okay. Yeah. So I think that I can only pick one of these. And maybe I'll change it actually to yoga classes because this ad that I, I want to put together is for my group class because I've been having lower uh, attendance than I'd like. Okay. Um, so what specific products or services do you want to promote in this ad? So I guess you could say group yoga class. 
And I'm not going to say pain care yoga because it's too specific. Okay. I okay. think that you know, not, you know, who's going to be searching for specifically that? Okay. This is a really like, good thing that right now it's what people are searching for. Yeah. That's what you have to think about. Okay. So, so pretend you're looking for, you think in your mind, okay, I'm going to go and search for yoga class in my area. What are you going to search when you're doing that? Okay. Right. Fantastic. So when I look up, I'm going to go, uh, you know, uh, yoga class. Sorry. I'm constantly doing that class, uh, Comox Valley. That would be definitely a term that someone's looking up. So really similar to like a search engine optimization question. You know, when you're optimizing your website, you want to ask yourself these questions. What are people going to search when they're looking for my product? Okay. So they have suggestions here. Bikram, hot yoga, power yoga, yoga classes near me. I like that. Right. Um, restorative yoga. I like that because, um, you know, restorative yoga, people who are looking for that are interested in more of a slower, calmer yoga, which is what I'm offering. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's pretty creepy how, how smart this is. <laughs> I'm going to change this here. I think this needs to be on an, its own line. Okay. Okay. So then I'm going to go to the next here. And so this is where you can write what you want to, to write in here. And then on this side here is the preview. Okay. So, so that shows us what that looks like. Yes. So I'm going to change this because I don't have a yoga studio in Comox. Right. But what I'm offering oh. is private yoga Comox Valley. And then maybe in here, <laughs> what I can say. Okay. I was like, get fit and de-stress. Yeah, no, that's not my thing. Well, de-stressing, yes. Um, I could say pain, care, yoga. Okay. This is so good. Okay. Right? So that gives them my, so, so when the ad comes up, they're going to say, oh, private yoga, Comox Valley. Oh, pain care yoga. Oh, well, that's why I want to do yoga because I have back pain and my doctor told me I should do yoga. Right? Okay. So then you see this little writing in gray here. This is this third section here. Mm -hmm. So you can unwind and feel healthy at Helena Spears Yoga. This is something that Google has written for me. I did not make that up. They've popped that in there. So I'm going to just make up my own little tagline. So if you have um, a tagline for your business or... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Shannon, when you, you have um, a saying that represents you? I feel like it's your tagline. I think you're right. Yeah, um, there's another word for it, but my the back lizard is too strong today. I can't think about it. Um, so uh, that's a pain care tip. So instead of saying, oh, my pain is bad today, I use a word swap. So I, use, I say the word back lizard because um, it helps you to have a less of an emotional response. Is there, is there a reason why you use the word lizard? Uh, I think it's funny. <laughs> okay. It's yeah. like, it could be anything. It could be anything. There's people, people use bananas. They use the word um, gopher. They use any, any word you want to use, you can do that. Um, but I just, I don't know, I just call it a back lizard or um, back Sabbath. That's another favorite. <laughs> That's a really, that's very clever. Yeah. So description, uh, personalized yoga services for those with persistent pain. Right. Right. Okay. So that, that's really what I do. And then I could also say, and pelvic pain. Right. Okay, that's very cool. So when they click on the ad, it's going to go to my website. Okay, and it's fine that it leaves your, it drops a pin where you are, tells your address. I'm fine with that. It 
it doesn't bother me. Um, yeah. But some people, it would bother them. They want to have privacy of their home. So that's why I was saying, you know, when you set up your, your business on Google, you know, you have to have something in there that lets it know where you are right. or else you're not going to populate in the area that you're in. Right. So even if you put in a PO box or something like that, if that's, well, that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go to next. And I could add pictures to this. Okay. If you wanted to. And a logo. And a logo. So actually I do have a logo. So you guys get to see the depth of my, <laughs> my computer madness here. <laughs> I feel like it's the same for everyone. Yeah. Okay. So I have a, um, this is my web logo here, I believe. So I'm going to open that and let's see what happens. Nothing. Okay. Well, it does say selected. One, One three. three. This is so handy when you're showing us in real time what it's I like. know, right? Because then you're like, well, what happened there? Well, it's saying selected two of three. So it's like putting them in there, but you can't yeah, see them. Yeah, I can't them. see them. Okay, let's just see what Google happens. Google should update that. They're there. They're there, but I can't see anything. That's bizarre. Not helpful, Google. Maybe it's because we'll give it the benefit of the doubt that maybe it's because we're sharing our screen and it's a bit slow. Maybe. I'm just going to take one out and see okay. what happens. Oh. Oh, so there's a, a little thing. If you guys can't read this, it says local image not allowed without at least one product image. Please add a product image or remove your logo image. That's bizarre. I'm going to so, skip. Maybe yeah. I will try under images rather than logo right. and see if I will have better luck with that. Oh, it's too small. Um, she's given me whole, a whole bunch of uh, different things to use on this. And I don't actually quite understand which one is which. <laughs> Here we go. Like something is happening. Work. Okay, well, I give up on this. <laughs> Let's go to next. You can put, add an image, get creative, use whatever you want to do. You can spend a lot of money doing this. Oh, wow. Yes, you can. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. And then you set your maximum per month. Yeah. So, let's change this to a dollar a day and see what happens. Oh, 231 is the minimum. Okay. And so that brings me to $70 a month. And it brings me to, um, you know, maybe 5,600 to 10,000 about impressions or 90 to 152 clicks a month. Okay. So this is, and it says under, underneath it said, this estimate is based on businesses with similar ad settings and budget. So you only pay when people click on your ad. Or call okay. You. So this is what might happen, but it might not. Depends okay. on how interested people are in in what you're offering, right? And you said you gained a lot of traction from this. That you saw. I had three phone calls in one week when I've had this on, and then I turned it off because I was like, oh, I don't have time for all this. <laughs> Do you hear that, yoga teachers? I wonder if anyone joining us live has questions. If you have questions yeah. about like. How much did you spend or? I think I ended up spending about 60 bucks. Right. And so the couple that I teach on Monday nights, they're one of the clients that I got out of this. And so they pay me $85 a session and we're on our second pack of five now. Okay. Amazing. That's a pretty good return on investment. Yeah. Yeah. I pay $20 each time they come as my rental of the space. So I'm making $65 every time they come. Right. And this is Canadian dollars. Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> For everyone who's showing up. Yeah. Stephanie says so helpful. Have not registered my business on Google business. Thank you. Absolutely. Amanda, register your business on Google. Yeah. Very helpful. And um, it really raises the visibility of your business. And it can seem almost meaningless when you're in a really large city center, um, but um, in a smaller town, especially, like it 
can make a big difference. So yeah, this is the review then. Okay, so you get to see it before you... Yeah, yeah you get a summary of everything. Okay, and then it's going to tell you, okay, that'll yeah, be Yeah, it's going to tell me everything about it. And then, what is it? It's probably going to come up with an error because my billing isn't accurate in Google Ads anymore. I had to... I got a new credit card. Um, so that would be one of my questions. How do you pay for this? Can you, you can put it on a credit card or can you link it to your you PayPal? Pay through your PayPal, that kind of thing. Okay. Amanda's asking, yeah. do you suggest starting with the minimum per day? I mean, it depends on how, how aggressive you want to be, right? And how much money you want to spend. I you guess start off with the minimum and see how it goes. And if you're not happy, then up it. Yeah. That's right. Fine. I think that's a good approach to it because if you, you go go large, then you might be spending money you don't necessarily need to. Mm -hmm. And okay, so this is one of the reasons why I did this was because I was struggling with the search engine optimization of my Squarespace site. I made it myself. And so, uh, yeah, I turned on these ads and it helped my website to populate much better. Okay, that's great to know yeah. as well. Tamara, Tamara, I'm going to get her name right by the end of this call, asked, do you need to have your website done before you can do this? Um, I don't think so. I think that you can put in a phone number. I would recommend that you have a website going, even if it's just a landing page. Right, yeah. Like right here's here's a landing my... page with just, you know, business name and uh, an email contact. Uh, form and maybe your logo if you have one and if you don't have a logo I mean it's super easy to make them on um, most website hosting services have a web uh, a, um, a logo um, maker or Canva is a great resource as well uh, you have a Squarespace site and so I'm curious to hear about that what is that like in terms of do you know how much that costs you per year and I, I do I think it was around 250 bucks for the year okay so it's yeah. pretty comparative then to a WordPress but what I like about Squarespace and I, I feel like that would be the top of my list for a pre-done one like it, it feels like that would be a little bit easier yeah like when I I've had um, I'm going to stop the share here. Yeah, right. sure. Um, back in the day, I had a blog, you know, with Blogger. Yes. Yeah, I had a, a blog for like um, recipes and food for people with IC. And yes. um, so I was really comfortable with doing that kind of thing. And I found Squarespace to be more similar to using Blogger than like WordPress, even just downloading it, I was confused. And I'm, I'm somewhat like internet literate. And so I just decided absolutely not for me. I'm not going to use WordPress. I'm going to just stick with something that I feel comfortable doing myself. And yeah, I spent like quite a few hours building the website, but I did it all when I was at work. So um, <laughs> double working. Uh, so it was totally a time for time that I had to, to give to it. And um I think it's worked out pretty good. I mean, it's not my dream website, you know, um, but it's totally functional and uh, does what I need it to do. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Uh, Stephanie says SEO is still a bit of a gray area for me. Me too, Stephanie. Yeah. So um, there, if you have a Squarespace website, I recommend actually this uh, SEO optimization course. It's a do-it-yourself course. It's from this guy named David Iskander. And he, um, Let me he see. Has a, yeah, I have his, he has a new uh, host for the site. And I actually just got the uh, email the other day. I'm going to share the link in the group. Okay. And, um, I really recommend that course. It was so easy to follow and it helps you to set up all the background stuff um, like the you know where Google is searching your website for information it helps you to set those those things up properly 
Okay. Oh, that's so, it so good. It makes a difference of like what type of font you have in what menu. It helps Google to, um, I shouldn't say font. I would say uh, the headers. So if you have a certain type of header, then Google is going to quote unquote, listen to that and search that. And so. Did you find the. This is, and while you're looking for that link, I'll just share from a WordPress perspective, my favorite tool is Yoast, SEO something Yoast. And so basically when I create a post on my website, it gives me like the green light, the yellow light, or the red light for every post. So it, it'll tell me, you know, you need to put these keywords in, you need to title your images, have featured images. It, it goes through and tells me. Yes, all those things, exactly. Yes. And it changes. So here's the thing, like my VA, many of you know her, Samantha Scott, she's in our group and she just posted about SEO. She follows it. So she, I would say like, get someone who, who, who does it. I just had an SEO. Um, what do you call it? Like a, like a, I don't know. It's part of a course that I'm doing. This woman looked at my website, looked at my analyst, analytics and then gave me a report an seo report i can get her name Ooh, that sounds great she is amazing i was really impressed because she said to me these are the posts that are doing the best so i want you to then take and do more on those and, and they're not ones that i really thought about doing more on yeah it's funny sometimes you think what you think is important isn't necessarily what others think is important no like, because our brains all work so differently. Yeah. And, and it, that's something that I'm really realizing. So I, I, I shared that link in the comments here. So maybe you can post that. Okay. Link. That's great. It'll show up in the video replay and I can yeah. try and put that. And it, it's a specific Squarespace um, course. It's not for all. Um, it's not a general course. It's very specific for Squarespace. Okay. Great, because then it's, it literally holds your hand the whole way through. Yeah. Here's the other thing with SEO. Like I would say, learn it in little pieces. So my partner, Sean, uh, he writes and he has, uh, he's a yoga teacher as well. And he also does science, health and science writing. So he got a book on SEO and I'll grab the name for it as well uh, when he gets home and ask him to share that because he, that that really moves things with his, with his business as well. Nana is on here. Nana, I see that you have a question. If you can either post it in the chat or in the Q and A, or I don't know if you're raising your hand to talk. Let me know if you're raising your hand so that you can talk. Uh, Amanda says, that's awesome. She'd love that resource as well. Wonder if anyone else has a good resource for SEO. Uh, that would be great to see also. What I can say is don't go on Reddit looking for SEO advice. Those people are way too smart. <laughs> because like, it's too confusing, you mean? Too confusing for me. I, I didn't even understand what they were saying. However, what I did do is I one time got a quote for having someone to work on my website for me. And I posted it on Reddit and those lovely ladies and gentlemen, they gave me the correct questions to ask about the quote. Cause I didn't even understand that. Oh yes. <laughs> and so then I was able to ask the, the, the guy questions about the quote and understand what he was really offering and not offering because right. sometimes people will do and they'll offer you an SEO analysis without doing the work. Oh, so then you're paying, you know, all this money for just an analysis oh. and not even that all the work. Right. To, to yeah. implement it. So that's something to look out for. Okay. Yeah. This is making me think that maybe we should do a podcast episode on it. Stephanie had asked this in the chat. Uh, have we done it? We haven't like, we've maybe talked a little bit and we talk a little bit about keyword search, but, um, Oh, yeah, I, th I definitely I think that it's important uh, because, you know, when I first set up my website, it wasn't even coming up at all. Like right. yoga, Comox Valley, private yoga, Comox Valley, uh, pain care, um, uh, yoga, Comox Valley, nothing was coming up at all. Yes. And now it is. And uh, part of it is because of doing the course and then also linking that add in made a huge difference. 
Yeah. I'm happy to show you what it looks like on the back end of a WordPress, but I feel like that would be overwhelming. Yeah. Or not applicable for everyone because the back end <laughs> of all different hosts are, are so different, right? Yeah, exactly. But I know that it does really matter, like little tiny things. If we do a featured image, we need to have those keywords in that featured image. Yeah. So yoga teachers will say, well, what if I put this poster on my website? Well, that's great as an image, but then all of those words are not SEO searchable. Like they're not. Exactly. Yeah. Because all Google, Google is seeing, oh, there's an image there and that's all it's seeing. It's not seeing any information about the image. Yeah. So you have to tell it what it's seeing. Yeah. And then one thing that I had issues with, and it's something that I would, I hope that I, I wish I'd known before I picked the, um, uh, like the skin of my website, you know, how they, diff they have the different types. Yeah, when yeah. I put in the image descriptions on my, on my website, they show up over top of the image. Oh, so right find um, a specific code to put in like actual code of how to hide the text. And um, I am very proud of myself because I found that on the internet and <laughs> put a specific code on my website to make it work. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's the way it is. Like I used to build websites and it's, you just are, you know, you're just guessing a lot of the time. Yes. Linda says, I have to run, but I can't wait to see the replay of this. I vote yes to a podcast as well. I'll get you info for Wix, as I know some yoga teachers use Wix as a website host as well. Maybe you can cover the three main platforms, WordPress, Squarespace, and Wix. Never resources fall. That's a really good idea. And Amanda just did her challenge today. So I will try and send a link to that. I, in the She's doing a challenge of how to earn more money as a yoga teacher. Great. And it's a five day challenge. Yes. Yes. I like those challenges. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. yeah. I did Emily Sussel's um, group. Uh, oh yeah. She teaches private yoga and that's for her focus, right? Yes. And then she also offers mentorship yes. and a group mentorship program. And I did that and I loved it. And it gave me so much confidence to go out and, and be a private yoga teacher. And yes. the only reason why I offer a group class at all is because it's for persistent pain. And I feel like it should be accessible. Other than that, I, would, I wouldn't be doing group classes at all. I don't enjoy teaching group classes. Yeah. I, I really feel like one-on-one um, -on -one is the way to go. And... Um, yeah, so it's given me the confidence to just even say that of like, I don't want to teach group classes. I don't want to work in a studio. I want to do one on one is is where I'm at. What yeah. do you think was the biggest thing? Do you think it was mindset before? Absolutely. So because, what was the biggest block? Oh, totally the um, imposter syndrome. You know, like, who am I? I have hardly any experience teaching yoga. How can I go straight to privates? Right. There aren't teachers who have 10 years of experience to the people who should be doing privates. And the truth is, no, it doesn't matter. Like, mm -mm. I can do private yoga. It's just, if that's what you want to do, then do that, right? And, and um, yeah, I found the whole, the whole process to be very helpful. And, and, this, and, and, and Emily does a great job and I'm sure you do a great job as well. I just think that any coaching at all is always worth it. It is. It's so worth it to have it, have someone, Amanda's just jumping off and her and I were like sharing little uh, Instagram messages back and forth today about a couple of things that we're stuck on in our own business. And it's so nice yeah. if you don't have like either find a yoga teacher friend or another business friend, like an entrepreneur friend who's doing something or like you yeah. said, a coach or a mentor. Yeah. And uh, we're in, and I mentioned our other business, the Arbor's business, like we're meeting today with a, an accountant who does business mentorship because we are at a crossroads and, and we need advice on what to do. And um, also um, having a business and a marriage at the same time can be challenging. Oh my gosh, so yes. We uh, decided that we're, we're going to ask for help. We need help. We need that's guidance. That's so good. And like that seems normal in every other business and it needs to be normal as a yoga teacher. Absolutely. I'll try and put a link to Emily. So what does Emily offer now then? 
Um, well, she does uh, weekend intensives in New York. So okay. she helps everyone in her amazing apartment in New York and you all hang out all weekend and um, that kind of thing. And then I'm pretty sure she's still doing a group mentorship program, but I'm not sure exactly when the next offering is. Okay. And then um, she also, of course, does one-on-one -on -one mentoring. And uh, yeah, she has a group, I believe it's called Mastering the Biz of Private Yoga. Right. Mm -hmm. I've chatted with Emily before. I've seen her things. You should have her on the podcast. She would be I great. Know. We yeah. have so many, it's so interesting because it's, does she has a website then? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, her, her private uh, teaching uh, website is Private Yoga Brooklyn. And I can't quite remember what her other website is for I her. I think, oh, I found it. I found it. Okay. It's the Abundant Yogi. Let That's it. Yeah. post it in the chat here. Yeah. So Stephanie also says she uses Wix. You know what, Stephanie? Someone else I know uses Wix, and it's a beautiful, amazing site. I think sometimes we think, oh, I have to have a WordPress site, but we don't. So that's Emily's link right there. Uh, do any of you have co questions about persistent pain, interstitial cystitis, you know, these Google ads? Uh, let's see what else. <laughs> Anything. Well, what do you feel like has been the biggest thing now? You, you're already to this place where you don't want more one-on-one -on -one clients, but what do you think moves the needle the most? Like, okay, I want more bookings and apart from the mindset. Um, it was just making it available. Like, like no one in my town is advertising that they teach private yoga. Right. No, no one else. It's, it's buried on their sites. Right. Like the first thing they have up is their group classes. Yeah. It's the first thing you see on my website. Okay. This Besides is my good. workshop. I think let's put a link right? to your website. Can you grab that? I'll just write it in. I know. Okay. Good. Um, and then are also our one other thing with this whole mindset around private versus group, what really shifted my mindset on this was I, I took a training with Trista Zinn. It was the hypopressive training. And she said, you can work one-on-one, -on -one, but you need this other training and you need way more experience to be able to work in groups. I was like, well, why? This is so backwards to what we're taught as yoga teachers. Yeah. And I totally agree with her though. Do you know, it's so hard for me to teach group <laughs> in class. Yeah. So easy one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. One-on-one, -on -one, I'm not distracted by 10 other things going on in the class. I'm paying attention to only that person. And I'm, I can watch their breathing. I can watch the expression on their face, right? Yeah. Because people aren't going to say they're uncomfortable. Right. But people don't do that. They, mm -hmm. they just oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing because this is what the form looks like. So then they just go through it. Where in reality, if it's causing you discomfort, then no, that's not how we want to do that. We want to modify in a different way to make it more comfortable for you so that you're relaxed and you're not in pain, right? Yes. It's so yeah. easy for me to do that one-on-one. -on -one. And then when there's four different people, well, I don't even teach larger than five people at a time in a group class. Right. But how and some people would call that semi-private to me that's a lot of people so like you know i've got one guy who's his whole leg's been tore up from motorcycle accident he can hardly even lay it with his leg straight and then i have the vet over here who you know he needs to be told to tone it down all the time right I mean, i've got someone's partner in the back who's like a, a normie right so then they're off doing their own thing oh my gosh it's so much whereas if i was just one-on-one -on -one, then it's it's way easier and i could charge more money for it i make more money doing it exactly right? it's like i say start with privates yeah oh yeah you know, it's definitely built my confidence up and and made it really good and the thing is about it is that i've discovered is that like with my private couple I don't need to show them newer fancy things at all. They are so grateful to have time to come and do nothing. Like, like they're so stressed out 
that I could get them to lay in Shavasana for an hour and they give me $5. Like, (laughs) Right. (laughs) right. So, so, you know, sometimes as yoga teachers, I feel like we get really caught up in like showing the next best and greatest, you know, adaptation or cool flow or this or that. And it doesn't need to be that way. It could just be super simple, easy, um, not complicated. Yes. It's it's so true. You know, like, I, I feel like there's this narrative in the, in our heads of, of, because you see it all the time on Instagram and Facebook of all these really cool, fun ways to be doing yoga. Yeah. And I don't think people really care that much besides yoga teachers. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. Yeah. Okay. So we have to get ready to wrap up here, but if any of you have last minute questions here, uh, Kim says, I totally agree. She also says way easier to modify one person than 10. So true. And then Stephanie said, thanks for the links and resources. Wish I could stay because I'm loving this. Totally agree. Groups being more challenging depending on the demographic. Thanks to you both. I feel like Stephanie, are you the physiotherapist that I know who's also a yoga teacher? And if so, I feel like we've had this discussion, like one-on-one is the way physiotherapy is also done as well. It's not like you say, let's get a group of people together with all kinds of things going on. And let's. Yeah. And, and, and then, yeah, I also feel like energetically for students, like I was talking about my vet who comes like his energy is super high all the time. So yeah. I'm constantly like, oh, what happens if you move a little bit slower? But if I have someone who is more, because I've been getting into Ayurveda lately, and they're like a Kapha style person, they don't want to move. Right. right. So then I need to encourage them to move more, right? right? In an appropriate way. So everyone has such different needs. I, I find the pain group classes overwhelming sometimes. And I, it's great because it's a challenge. And I, it's, it's kind of, I feel like um, a little bit of a dharma for me to be offering that. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, totally stresses me out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, thank you so much for all of this today, all the way from Google ads to all kinds of topics. This has been amazing. Yeah. Thanks. I love chatting yoga and all these things so much. Uh, it's so much fun and I can't wait for the day it's going to happen when I can resign from my MRI job and just go full bore yoga business, yoga stuff. It, yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you for taking the time today when your back lizard is acting up. As no, well. it's good. It helps distract my brain. It's good. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you, you, Helena. Have a great day. You guys too. Thanks everyone. I'm going to leave the meeting. <laughs> okay. Me too. Bye-bye.